In this video, I will demonstrate how a sound insulation test of a wall is made in a laboratory. A laboratory, acoustic laboratory, it's basically it's a concrete bunker with extremely high sound insulation. So consider we have two pretty large rooms adjacent to each other like this. Another one there. And then you have a separating wall in the middle, the thick concrete wall here. Now we could designate these rooms as room one and room two. And this construction, it's like I said, it's like a bunker. It's extremely strong surrounding constructions with regards to sound insulation, like thick concre concrete. So you basically have no sound transmission between these walls. And then in this middle part, there's a hole. Like so. An opening between these two rooms. And in this opening, you construct a test wall or another building element for that matter. It could be something else as well. But in this example, let's consider it. it's, it's a wall. So we build the wall inside this opening and then we do a standard sound insulation test. And the thing is, when we do the sound insulation test here, which is basically that we, we put on a sound source in, in one of the rooms. It's, uh, oh wait, let me grab a thinner pencil. It's a, a loudspeaker in here that's going to emit a very, very strong sound in here. So we build up a strong sound pressure here in room one. We measure the sound pressure level here. LP as is level of pressure. Actually, we, usually we call it L1 to designate room one, the sending room. And then we measure the sound pressure level in here, the second room. We measure L2, the receiving sound pressure level. And by comparing these two sound pressure levels, L1 minus L2, we will get the difference between the rooms. And the difference is what is used to quantify the properties, the sound insulation properties of this wall. So we're going to keep, well, keep it extremely simple now. It's uh, a bit more complicated when you do the real thing because you have to do some corrections with regards to room size or um, reverberation time in this room. But the basic principle still holds is that you have, let's say you have 100 decibels in here and you got 40 in this room. So 100 minus 40, 60 dBs is gone. That means that the wall has a sound insulation of, of 60 dB. Now that's a simplification, I know, but it's uh, the principle is like that. And because you have such a high sound insulation with all these other constructions, they are completely negligible in relation to what the sound <clears throat> that goes through this wall partition. And this is how you determine the sound insulation properties in a laboratory for a wall. And the important thing to know here is that when you then look in the manufacturer's data sheet on this wall, and it says that it has 60 dB sound insulation in this laboratory. And then you think, yeah, great, I'm going to get this wall, put it in my real building, and I'm going to get 60 dB in the field. No, you're not going to get that in situ. Because when you do this in a building, you will have other transmission paths. Because the rest of the finished building will not have thick concrete all around it like a bunker. It will be a real building. And that means that you're going to get, if this is the separating wall between two rooms, you're gonna get, uh, you, you will have uh, direct sound like in the figure, but you will also have like this flanking, tra flanking transmission. You're gonna get transmission through the ceiling, you're gonna get flanking transmission to the, through the floor, you're gonna have some ventilation, and you're gonna have perhaps some workmanship issues that are maybe some leakage here and there. So there are many more transmission paths in the real world than what you have in the perfect laboratory environment. And that means that, oh, sorry, it ha 
I have to move this one up, otherwise you won't be able to see it. There, there's the sketch I did, so you know what it looks like. In the real world, when you have all these transmission paths considered, you're gonna get a lower value than, than what you had in the laboratory. So remember that you need some safety margins from the laboratory value compared to the field value. Otherwise, you might end up with too low sound insulation. And in today's video, I'm wearing gray. I've, maybe this is like lazy week because I have had very simple, just like one or two shirts, which I've alternated just a new jacket and a different pocket square. But it's, it's like you can do so much with so little. Here's, I, I really like this combination. It's a... Uh, I have to do something about this microphone. It's not good for style videos. Burgundy and gray goes really well together. I really like this combination because you got some gray and white here on the stripes on the pocket square and it picks up the patterns here. Very good. Good contrast here and also gray in the shirt. However, what you could hold against this is that it's uh, maybe it's a bit boring. You might want to have something to liven it up a bit but uh, that could be if you just add a tie in a different color then you're set or you could have a little lapel flower perhaps here to get some little other color to get some some other contrast but i like it also it's pretty pretty nice to have a a pretty relaxed down to earth out, outfit keep it simple and also have a nice weekend and i'll see you later ciao